Let's look at some explicit modular exponentiation problems. Um, they're all going to relate to the little Fermat theorem because that's such an important fact about modular exponentiation. So first we're gonna do one where we're in Z mod 17. We're not gonna use this table quite yet uh, over here because that's mod 13. So in mod, Z mod 17, five, and I'm gonna write that with a bar because it's in Z mod 17, to the 16, written without a bar because we're thinking of it as an ordinary integer. Um, What's, what's that gonna be? Do we actually have to calculate five to the 16th in ordinary integer arithmetic and then reduce mod 17? Or do we have to take five and re repeatedly multiply it by itself 16 times all within Z mod 17? That'd be maybe a little better, but still laborious. But the great thing is that little Fermat says, hey, 17 is prime, 16 is one minus 17. This is equal to one, or I'll write it as one bar. Okay, and so that is really, really a big deal because it's a massive simplification in the computation. Okay, so what about nine to the 48th power? Well, nine is another non-zero element of, of Z mod 17. Um, I didn't pick it to be special in any way, except that it's non-zero. But the 48, you might notice, is quite special. Okay, this is going to be the same thing as 16 copies of nine multiplied together. And then you do that three times. Okay, so aha, so that 48 is a multiple of 16. So in the exponent slot, as I mentioned in the other videos, um, it's really a repetition or a mod 16 phenomenon that's going on. Well, so that's just one to the three equals one. And again, basically just by little Fermat, just extend it a little bit with a little bit of rules of exponents. Little Fermat and a crucial rule of exponents. Okay, what about nine to the 49? Now, this is quite, quite closely related to the previous one. Well, don't do that from scratch. If you, if you already know that nine to the 48 is equal to one, we've just multiplied that by nine. So remember, one of the things that, that you wanna remember with exponents is calculating every single one of them from scratch or even using a fancy theorem isn't necessarily the best thing to do. Often reducing it, thinking about it as m repeated multiplication is really the crucial thing. Or in other words, using this crucial rule of exponents, which is when I multiply two things, the exponents add, okay. So that's equal to one times nine. I'll steal it from here so I don't have to do the bar. And of course, that's just equal to nine, okay? So, uh, and this is an aspect of the fact that we're really getting a cyclical behavior. When you raise nine to repeated higher powers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then at 16, it gets back to one. At 17, it'll get back to nine. Then it'll repeat what it was for nine squared, repeat what it was for nine cubed, blah, 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 until you get to 32 and then 48, and you've got this repeated behavior in the exponent that's mod 16. So for example, a little harder one, nine bar to the 51, again, don't do it from scratch. Emulate what we got here. Um, I'm gonna just copy this all, but it's gonna be different a little bit. Okay, that's times nine cubed. Okay. Well, so that's one times nine cubed. Okay, so we really, we actually still have to reduce that nine cubed. Okay, so at some point, yes, sometimes you actually have to do things a little bit by hand, but I'm still gonna use rules of exponents. Whoa, that's not really what I want at all. Okay, I'm just gonna repeatedly multiply, but I'm gonna keep within the mod world. Um, oops. Okay, so it's nine squared times nine. Okay, so nine squared is 81. If you reduce that mod 17, uh, 17 times five is 85, so that's six with a bar on top, okay, times nine. So the only computation I had to do was 81, ordinary nine squared, and then <clears throat> divide it by 17 and take the remainder and you get six. Six times nine, I'll just have a bar. Uh, is 54, uh, subtract 51, which is a multiple, and you get three. Okay, so at some point, yes, you might have to do some actual computations of the type we've been used to with mods, is do an ordinary integer computation, and then 
find the remainder mod 17. But not as much as you'd think. Not nearly as much as you'd think. And you pretty much should never be doing it with huge, huge, huge numbers. Okay. So what about 16 to the 24,000? Um, this is exhibiting another little pattern that's actually not super closely tied to Little Fermat. Um, actually, ooh, let's see. Yeah, so I didn't choose that 24,000. Actually, let me just make it a little bit more random. 24, oh, like 8, something like that. I didn't choose that to have any particular relationship to 16 in particular, uh, the power, the magic exponent that activates little Fermat, but I did choose it to be an even number. And one of the things I mentioned in one of the other videos is that 16, when, you, when it's the base uh, in mod 17, the special role of 16 as a base, not as an exponent, is it's just another name for minus 1. And Always, if you take minus one in any algebraic system to an even power, you're just going to get one. So that's kind of a nice, another cool fact um, that we can exploit some, some properties of a Z mod 17. All right, in the next video, I will do a few things that are pretty similar but kind of phrased a little backwards in Z mod 13.